What is going on, everybody? We're going to start today's show with an extra heaping of appreciation for Paul Chris and everything he did for Wisconsin and the type of person he is. So that's where we're going to start. But then we got a bunch more Paul Chris content on today's Locked On Badgers. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, what is going on, everybody? I am Ryan Herrings, your host of Locked On Badgers, your team every single day. Super appreciative of everybody that's finding us, everybody that's watching. Today's show is brought to you by Simply Safe. Uh, today's episode of Locked On Badgers is sponsored by the Simply Safe home security system with fast protect technology exclusively from Simply Safe. 24 7 monitoring agents capture evidence to accurately verify a threat for faster police response. There is no safe like Simply Safe. Visit simplysafe.com slash locked on college to learn more. And again, we just really want to thank everybody for tuning in and listening. The Discord's growing, our community's growing, and that's really a reflection of everybody involved in it. I want to start here because there's a lot of, I mean, there's so much going on right now with the Paul Chris news, right? The football program in the middle of uh, getting ready to play Northwestern, coming up a bad loss, and we're seeing coaching big boards going up. We're seeing fans be excited. And listen, I, I get all of that. Like, I'm here for that too to discuss the next coach, to get excited. I think we would be remiss. I would be remiss if we didn't take a segment, take some time to really be appreciative of Paul Christ and what he did in Madison, what he did for Wisconsin. And I love using the word appreciative in this context because I talking about Paul Christ, that was his favorite word, but I, I it's true. I Multiple things can be true here. We can be very excited for the next chapter of Wisconsin football. I think we all thought... There, no, I shouldn't say all. A lot of people thought an infusion of energy was needed, an infusion of forward momentum was needed, and for whatever reason, Paul Christ wasn't doing that. But the the we can also acknowledge how much he did for the University of Madison, how beloved he was by his players, you know, how good of a human being he is. So, I want to start with that. And the first thing I want to start with is just the the tremendous outpouring of of you know, former players, current players expressing how much Paul Chris means to them. And it's all over Twitter. Go to Twitter, look up Paul Chris and and see what, you know, former players are are saying about him. See what Alec Ingold's saying about him. You know, Chris James, uh, running back from Pittsburgh that followed him to Wisconsin. You know, see what current players, Miles Burkett, Braylon Allen, um, Nick Herbig, uh, on and on, Julius Davis, Graham Mertz, etc. I mean, there's so many people. There's so many people who have taken to Twitter and said, you know, this this guy believed in me. What he did for me was is incredible. I will always be grateful. And that doesn't happen for a jerk. Like, let's just be honest. Like, you know, he no one has ever said anything bad about Paul Chris, the human being. Right. It's if there's coaching quibbles and we, we've talked about that. But Paul Chris, the human being, is an easy guy to root for. He's a Madison, Wisconsin guy through and through. And he's done a ton for the program. And. Let's acknowledge that. And I hope, I don't know him personally, um, probably kind of obviously, I don't know him personally, but if people see him out somewhere, if they see him at a bar, if they see him somewhere, I hope people will take the second, if they're Badger fans, to go up to him and say, thank you. Like, thank you. Great job, coach. Really appreciate everything you did. Um, you know, before the season, I talked about Big Ten coaching tiers. And I, had, I had Paul Chris third. He does a lot of things really well. And I don't want this. And I t- we talked about this on the live show. I don't want to dance on the, the grave of Paul Chris show or party. Like he did a lot for Wisconsin. He did a lot for this program, you know, and I want to be appreciative of that. I want to acknowledge that. And the other thing is it's really easy to root for people that are, are genuinely good dudes. Like when you're following your sports team and there there's jerks and there's slimy people everywhere, there's slimy people in sports. It's nice to root for someone that you, you legitimately think is a good dude. And that's Paul Christ. Like he was that uncle coach who also, by the way, won 72% of his games in Madison. You know, he has seven bowl wins in his career. You know, that may or may not seem like a lot, but for perspective, that's more than uh, Lloyd Carr, Earl Bruce, Woody Hayes, James Franklin, Pat Fitzgerald, Bo Schembechler, Brett Bielema. I mean, there's some legends on that list. Paul Christ, now there's more bowl games now, but seven bowl games is, is seven bowl victories is a legit thing. That's in the top 40 uh, all time in college football history. So, like, well, let's give him his due. Let's understand the, the really good things that he did for Wisconsin. And by the way, some of those good things are continuing to carry forward. Like, it's not all lost. You know, when when Paul Chris got here, one of the best things Paul Chris does 
and one of the best things he has done is build, maintain, and um, help enrich the Wisconsin culture. The the thing that gives Wisconsin that little bit of edge, like he has really helped maintain that and build that. Carried over from from Barry Alvarez to Brett Bielema um, into Paul Chris era. That's not broken. I don't think it is. He's gone in and he's repaired inroads. Him and his staff has repaired inroads in state from what Gary Anderson was starting to destroy. You know, and the other thing I'll give him credit for, this defense has been incredible under his watch. And people, I, I don't love the the angle that, well, he has nothing to do with that. He's the head coach. Absolutely he does. He could have, when he came in, he was lucky, right? He came in and Dave Aranda was here. And I mean, that's that's a great stroke of fortune to walk into. But a lot of head coaches would come in and still bring their guys with them and say, sorry, you're not my guy. A lot of, like, keeping Dave Aranda was a layup, right? A lot of coaches blow layups. Newsflash. <laughs> like, you know, a lot of coaches blow those layups, and Paul Chris didn't. Paul Chris came in, and he brought a lot of his people with him, but he also kept Dave Aranda, right? He kept Dave Aranda. He kept the 3-4, a defense that, under his tenure at Pitt, they, they ran a 4-3. So, you know, there's a lot of talk about Paul Chris not being able to adapt or evolve or being too stubborn, this or that. Like, he wasn't in that moment. And our defensive culture has really built because of some of those decisions of Paul Chris to stay out of the way. And again, like, that may seem easy. A lot of coaches can't do that. A lot of coaches can't do that. You know, he's a guy, two-time Big Ten Coach of the Year, three division titles, Cotton Bowl, Orange Bowl at 13-1 in one year. Uh, for a couple of years, brought recruiting up to points that previously Wisconsin had never been at. So at least he was able to show that you can do that here. You know, a ton of good stuff. Um, we talked about the former players reaching out, but primarily he was he just kept Wisconsin from ever being bad, which matters, right? He built on the culture. He kept the 3-4 defense and helped build that defensive culture. He's also the guy that, by the way, gave Jim Leonard this coaching opportunity and elevated him to defensive coordinator with no experience, really. The guy that most Badger fans think is a coaching genius and we want to take over right away may not even be in this position if not for Paul Christ. So, yeah, I, I just really hope as Badger fans, he's a great dude and he did incredible things at Wisconsin. And a lot of us can say we were ready to move on and we think it's the right move while also acknowledging how great he was and how much he did and how much he cared. So, you know, not that he's ever going to listen to Locked On Badgers, but thank you, coach for everything you did for the University of Wisconsin, for everything that this place accomplished while you're here, and for gracefully, you know, what seems to be gracefully accepting um, the decision to go in a different direction. Yeah, I, I just hope, again, I we can be excited to move on. I am. I'm excited to see new energy and new direction. We can be excited to talk about new coaches. Always, I, I wouldn't say always, but... Definitely keep in the back of your head what Paul Christ was to Madison, how much this meant to him, and, and the type of guy he was. All right, coming up on Locked on Badgers, we're going to take some user comments off Twitter, off of our YouTube feed. A lot of interesting stuff there. Some things I think are just blatantly ridiculous takes. Uh, we're going to get into that next on Locked on Badgers. Uh, but first, today's show is brought to you by Simply Safe. Simply Safe. The numbers don't lie. In the last decade, 4 million people have chosen Simply Safe Home Security to protect their home. You don't have to, or you don't earn the trust of that many people unless what you're doing works and people continue to buy into it and you're doing something right. At Simply Safe, your safety is the only thing that matters. I know this because I use Simply Safe for my home. Um, I, they protect you with cutting edge security technology powered by 24 7 professional monitoring agents who always have your back. Here's why I love it. And I've been using Simply Safe probably four or five years now. Um, we have it on all of our windows, all of our doors. The ease of installation, no wires, you just stick it, it's a sticker. You stick one sensor um, on your door and one above your door sill. So when the door opens, it just automatically trips it. We do the same with all of our first floor windows. And I love Simply Safe because it allows me, I travel very occasionally, but I do travel occasionally for business. And Simply Safe allows me to feel secure about you know my family being home because I know they're protected by monitoring. I know they're protected by sensors. And it gives us the peace of mind. Um, my wife as well, it gives us the peace of mind to be safe even when we're not all there. So that's why I love Simply Safe. Um, if you go to Simply Safe, the website, we have a great offer for you. Customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes at simplysafe.com slash locked on college. You're going to save 20% on your Simply Safe security system when you sign up for an interactive monitoring, monitoring plan. Get your first month, uh, your first month free. Visit simplysafe.com slash locked on college to learn more. There's no safe like Simply Safe. 
want to thank everybody again for tuning in to Locked On Badgers. I appreciate it so, so, so much. Um, if you can, if you feel like it, if you enjoy it, uh, you don't have to. But if, if you enjoy the show, hit the subscribe button. We are trying to catch Iowa, the Locked On Iowa channel. We're getting there. We're like 70 away. Um, and we will catch them because this is a better fan base in Iowa. This is a the Badger fan base is a better fan base in Iowa. I'm sure of it. I'm so sure of it that uh, by the end of the year, I know we're going to catch that group. All right, let's let's dive into this. Let's talk some of the user comments, some of the thoughts out there, both off Twitter and off our YouTube channel where people have left comments there. If I don't get to all your comments, it's because I don't have the time, y'all. And by the way, if some of your comments are a little shorter, it's because I have a 200 character limit. So I got to cut it down. But I tried to get the meat of it. All right, let's go here. Um, Roderick Rogers, former Wisconsin defensive back. This was off Twitter. Uh, my bro at Jim Leonard in the driver's seat. I learned a lot sitting behind him at Wisconsin until my time came. Yeah. Uh, and this is, I wanted to put this up there because this is very similar to just about everything we hear about Jim Leonard, the people that talk about him. Basically you learn a lot being by him. Like you learn a lot seeing him. You learn a lot playing with him. You learn a lot when he's your coach. These are all, listen, we don't know, but no, I've never seen a comment about Jim Leonard anywhere that said, yeah, that guy's not very smart. Or, yeah, that guy doesn't get football. That guy, listen, everything Jim Leonard has done has been overachieving and going beyond expectations. I have no doubt that from a, from a football X's and O's intelligence standpoint that he is going to crush this. I have no doubt about that. Um, being a head coach is a little different, though, than just X's and O's. So there's other challenges that come along with it. That's what I'm interested to see what he does uh, with the staff, with recruiting. Um but as Roderick Rogers said, that dude is just smart. I mean, I'm, I'm rephrasing what Rod is saying, but that dude is just smart. So we're very lucky and fortunate to have Leonard um, kind of in the fold, ready to go. Let's keep going. Uh, this is from Jeff Petroikis, a uh, longtime Badgers writer. Paul Christ was due $20 million and change after being removed as head coach. Parties agreed to a payment of $11 million to be paid no later than February 1st. Funds come from the UW Foundation. So a couple of things with this, and this was reported in many spots. The, the buyout was apparently about $20 million. Um, Paul Christ and the university are going to part ways at a, with a, around about $11 million. And I, I, I saw some people say that maybe there was something else going on behind the scenes where Christ was you know, amicable to taking a lesser pay. I think it's just Chris is a good dude. I really, I don't know. I don't know what that conversation was like. Obviously, I will probably never know the exact details of it, but I think this is an indication again of the type of dude Paul Chris is. Do you know how many coaches are going to leave $9 million on the table getting fired? You, you, did Scott Frost leave any on the table? No, of course he didn't. And Scott Frost was a disaster at Nebraska and he still built them for every penny. Paul Chris is the furthest thing from a disaster at Wisconsin. And he he let $9 million evaporate. Like, and again, listen, nobody should feel sorry for Paul Chris, right? $11 million is more than, I mean, it's more than the vast majority of people will ever make in their lifetimes. But most people would still take the 20, right? If most people would still take the 20, most college football coaches would still take the 20. This, I think, is another indication of how good of a dude Paul Christ is and how much Wisconsin means to him. So I want to come up with another um, quote right here. This is from Scary Alvarez, who's, who's one of the best uh, longtime Twitter falls for Wisconsin football. And he said, this is how much Paul Christ loves the Wisconsin football program. Dude gets fired. And instead of burning bridges, he makes sure there's money left over to improve the bridges. I love that last quote. That is so well said by Scary Alvarez. And again, a great Badger follow on Twitter. Um, fun, witty. Uh, but the last part there, you know, he, Paul Chris isn't burning any bridges because he gives a crap about Wisconsin. And as you know, it, not only is he not burning bridges, but he's leaving some money on the table. So uh, that's a great that's a great point. I think that's all part of Paul Chris and, and why he's so easy to root for and why he's so likable. Because he really does give a crap about the University of Wisconsin. Um, here we go from Salvador Allende. No matter what you think about Chris as a head coach, seems like a terrific guy. Gave many years to Badger football and should be appreciated for his contributions. Yes. I don't want to see. Here's, here's what I don't want to see. And obviously people you tweet what you want to tweet. Uh, write what you want to write. I'm not trying to be in charge of anybody's thoughts. But I don't re I'm not really here for trying to rub it in Paul Chris's face or, or playing the who was right game. There's been a pretty long standing divide among Badger fans on message boards. If Paul Chris is the guy, if he's not where the program's trending, like I've kind of been on one side of that, but I'm not here for like, it doesn't make me happy that Paul Chris 
is going out this way. Like I would have rather had Paul Chris be a great coach at Wisconsin for the next 10 years. And I'm going to choose to appreciate what he did while being excited moving forward. I'm not here for any type of rubbing in Paul Chris face or, or anyone who defended Paul Christ. Like at the end of the day, we're all Wisconsin fans, right? We all want the same thing, a successful football program. And Paul Chris wanted that too. I have no doubt in my mind. That's what also what Paul Chris wanted. So yeah, I think he's a great dude. It didn't work out. It is what it is. Um, but I'm not here for any trying to rub it in anybody's face with Paul Crest. All right, let's get into this one. This this is a comment that you've seen in some type of iteration, or I've seen in some type of iteration so many times, and I got to dive into it. Uh, Wisconsin is making a huge mistake by firing Paul Crest. They will be the new Nebraska. Uh, from Grayson24, this is off our YouTube channel. Uh, I believe this was off one of our YouTube channels. Um, listen. I, we got to address this Nebraska thing because it's driving me nuts. Wisconsin is not going to be the new Nebraska because they fired Paul Chris. First of all, people are mi are mixing up what went wrong at Nebraska. Okay, firing Pelini wasn't what went wrong. That wasn't the mistake. The mistake was hiring Mike Riley, and then the mistake was hiring Scott Frost. Go back to Solich. The mistake wasn't necessarily firing Solich. It was hiring Bill Callahan. You know, like. That's that's what people always gloss over. They're like, well, man, you, they shouldn't have fired Pelini. No, they should have fired Pelini. What they shouldn't have done is hired Mike Riley. Like, that's the mistake. And I, I understand what fans are saying. They're, they're kind of saying in a way, it's not always easy to find the next coach. But nobody thought Mike Riley was a home run addition. You know, Scott Frost should have done better, but he had one good year. Like, my point is, Wisconsin isn't going to become the new Nebraska because they fired Paul Chris. They're going to become the new Nebraska if they make a series, like multitudes of bad coaching decisions. Like that's what, that's how this Nebraska became this Nebraska. Again, it wasn't firing Bo Pelini. People, people have this romanticized version of Bo Pelini. Y'all remember him in big games? Like not only was he calling out, I think he called out local fans and medias like Hicks. But he was also getting dump trucked by Wisconsin in big games, getting dump trucked, like looking like we did against Ohio State this year, which led to Paul Chris being fired. You know, like firing Pelini wasn't the issue. The issue was you had an inept athletic administration that kept hiring bad coaches. You know, and quite frankly, I don't think Jim Leonard's a bad coach. And if they go out and get Lance Leopold, I don't think he's a bad coach. So, no, they're not going to become the new Nebraska. I, I reject that notion based on what based on the line being drawn from Paul Chris to Brett or to Bo Pelini. I reject that notion. Now, if Wisconsin, yeah, if Wisconsin bumbles through three different bad coaches that they've hired, then yeah, they will become the next Nebraska. Cause that's how you got here. It's not firing Pelini. It's being inept in your coaching searches. All right. Um, same thing here. <laughs> Nebraska fan, um, Nebraska, this is John. This is off our YouTube channel. This might be Wisconsin's Frank Solich moment. Not sure this is a wise, wise decision. This is a more nuanced take, right? Not sure this is a wise decision. Yeah, this could blow up. Anytime you make change, it could blow up in your face. Uh, Paul Chris, despite the fact that the inertia of the program was starting to slow, like a, like a marble rolling uphill, despite that fact, you know, you could do worse. Absolutely could do worse. So, yeah, th this – we could look back at this and say we regret the decision, but I think we would look back and say we regret the decision because we didn't hire the right guy to replace Paul, not because we let Paul go. Um, that's just my take on that. Uh, Jim Tillerson, Lance Leopold, and man for the job. I can't argue. I mean, Leonard's going to get his shot, right? But Lance is 5-0 and at Kansas, and he's been a winner his entire career, and he knows the state of Wisconsin. So... Yeah, I mean, Justin Joko is on the show all the time, has been has been uh, a fan of Lance for a couple years now and really touting him as, as a guy that Wisconsin should go after and he would love them to go after. So he's been great. He's done excellent. He's going to get paid this offseason. Either he's staying at Kansas and they're going to bump him up huge or he's going to go to Nebraska. He's going to go to Colorado, Auburn, if it open, you know, Auburn, he's going to go to Wisconsin. Like he's going to get paid this offseason. So I would be all for Wisconsin taking a hard run at Lance if Jim Leonard doesn't work out. Uh, Larry Smith off the YouTube channel, Wisconsin lacks talent in capital letters. Hard for Leonard to turn around a team that lacks talent. No chance they look much better immediately. So this is something we talked about a lot. And I wanted to get this comment up here because I really want your, your take. Uh, the people listening to this show, what do you think? Like, what does Jim Leonard have to do to earn this job? Because this comment is dead right. And there's a few other comments like this from Larry. And I appreciate the comment, Larry. 
like Jim Leonard can't help the offensive line block better. Like he can't help the receivers catch the ball. He can't help Braylon Allen be more decisive. So are we expecting too much from a guy who quite frankly is, is been in charge of the best part of Wisconsin over the last several years? Like the offense is what's broken. That's not Leonard's baby. Now where, where maybe we could see, maybe we see a little more energy. Maybe we see a little more creativity, um, better in-game management. And maybe this is where I'm at. And this is where I'm really curious we don't know how much Paul Christ has, has had his hands kind of in the offense. Maybe this isn't really what Bobby Ingram has wanted to do. And maybe now we open it up a little bit more. Maybe we get a little more creative. I'm not sure. We don't know, but no, no excuses now, right? Now there's, it's Bobby Ingram's offense, hundred percent period. Now there's no, well, are, are we sure who's calling plays or the influence of it? We're going to find out with Bobby and it might not be fair for him either, by the way, because if the offensive line's not doing well, you know, the running game isn't working. It's going to be hard to manufacture an offense out of that, quite frankly. Um, Larry, thank you for the comments. Coming up, a bunch more comments. We're going to get to a lot of other talks and kind of a, a closing thought on, on Jim Leonard on today's Lockdown Badgers. But first, today's show is brought to you by Bet Online uh, or Built Bar. I'm sorry. Today's show is brought to you by Built Bar, our friends at Built Bar, who, which I just got a, a new box of Built Bars, by the way, a variety pack, which Bill Bar is still just my favorite go-to easy protein snack. My kids raid my Bill Bars because it tastes like candy, but it's 100% real chocolate, great flavor, not a lot of sugar, and 15 to 20 grams of protein in every single bar. My new favorite is the cookie dough chunk puffs. Um, it's a light and chewy texture, real cookie dough chunks, and of course, 100% real chocolate like all of their, their bars. All the joys of eating cookie dough without the hassle of making it, plus it's healthy for you, right? Um, only 160 calories, 15 grams of protein. Run to built.com, snag a box for you and the family. It'll be a perfect treat or find some hiding spots. Hoard them around the house so your family can get to them. That's where I'm at now. That's what I'm starting to do. Um, you're going to love it. You're going to love the cookie dough, a chunk puff. Whether you need a snack for your workout, a late night treat, or just to grab a quick bite, Built is the perfect protein bar and they taste better than a candy bar. Trust me on that. Go to built.com, promo code locked on 15. Get 15% off your order, promo code locked on 15. All right, I want to welcome everyone back to uh, Locked on Badgers. Ryan Herring's your host, your team every day. Really, really appreciate all that y'all do for the community as we build this up. Um, let's keep going through this. So, Afeko, <clears throat> excuse me, Akefo, who's been a longtime commenter on the show, he Justin Joko, we got to get him to respond to this. So, Justin hasn't had a chance to respond yet, but Justin was dead wrong about the Ohio State game. Afeko, Akefo called it. Um, but Justin, and Akefo was pointing this out, did speak very much about – I think one of the hidden areas where Paul Chris was coming up a little light, and that is the the brand of the program, right? The little things around the program, it felt like they all fell off the last couple of years under Paul Christ, right? You remember we used to have a spring game, right? People remember that. I, I would tune into it. People would go to it. It was an event. And, you know, we don't get 70,000 at our spring game like Ohio State or Nebraska, but we would still get ten or 15,000, and that's better than nothing. Like getting – Having the opportunity to get ten to 15,000 people out to watch your football program, to build some excitement, to interact with people in the athletic administration, I think that matters. It's it's a big deal. And it, it was also something we use those tickets to you know give to other parts of the university. Um, and quite frankly, even if we're not pulling our spring game numbers like other big schools do, you know, those schools having those big spring events and us doing nothing, it, it kind of makes it look like we're playing second fiddle, right? And then the Mendota Gridiron Club went away. Um, the speaking engagements seemed to go away. Like in, in an era of NIL, in an era where flash is starting to matter a little more, and I don't want us to be PJ Fleck, row the boat nonsense, right? But we need we need to have a little more energy, and you need to have a little more hype because you have to sell your program more. And by the way, those things also are going to influence boosters. It's going to help money come into the program when you're excited about it, when you're building the brand, when you're talking to people, when you're having events. And I think a lot of that did kind of, um, okay, to your point, go away. And I appreciate the comment. I, I think it's totally dead on. Let's go to Vegas, Jay. Uh, O-line sucks right now. Leonard can't fix that. Yeah. That's, it's what we talked about a couple comments ago, right? How does Leonard fix an offensive line that's broken? He doesn't like if we're being real, the answer is he doesn't either Bob Bostead fixes it or it doesn't get fixed. And I'm not, I'm not closing the book on Bob yet. You know, Bostead, Bostead has been such a good offensive line coach for most of his career. I'm not closing the book on that. I think it's a combination of, you know, it's a new coaching style, offensive lineman adjusting to it, young players in that offense line and injuries. So um, 
Yeah, it's a great point, Vegas J. He's not going to fix it. It's either going to be Bob Bostead or nobody this year. Um, Wisconsin should have a top 20 recruiting class every every year. Everything, Anything less is a failure. I would say top 25, but you're right there. So at that point, we're parsing five, five schools. Yeah, I, I, we're mostly right there with you, Tim. And that's something John Garcia talked about. Wisconsin, if they're not in the top 25, it's a bit of a failure. And I wanted to put this comment up there because it it's kind of going into – some of the issues with Paul Chris the last couple of years. Last year was we were in the 40s or 50s. Right now we're 57th in the country according to the 247 composite. I mean, you're saying top 20. We're not even top 40 right now, right? And quite frankly, we're not going to hit it this year. So, yeah, you don't need to be a recruiting juggernaut, but if you're not bringing in talent continuously um, at a high level, which Wisconsin last couple of years hasn't been able to do, yeah, it's time for probably time for some changes, which, again, is what we've seen. Um, idiocy. The athletic director is short-sighted in the extreme, which is typical these days. A comment from Patrick O'Connell saying this is idiocy. I actually think it's, I gotta be honest, Patrick, and I appreciate the take. Again, I'm here for all the different takes and I could be wrong on this. I actually think this shows a lot of foresight. Like I made the analogy, if, if you're watching a car going, you know, off an exit, going too quick and they're going to careen out of control. You can wait until that thing finishes careening out of control and it's on fire to say, ah, we got to make a change. Or before that car hits that exit, you can say, let's hit the brakes here because that doesn't look like it's going to work. And I think that's actually where they're at. You know, the the underlying trends here, we talked about recruiting. We talked about the little things around the program falling off. We talked about, you know, some of the game day decisions over the last four years. You know, some of the some of the hires even, you know, Al John moving. So the offense was broken this year, right? or has been broken for a couple of years. So Paul Chris made a bunch of changes. His changes were hiring a running backs coach that's never coached running backs, moving a tight ends coach to tight end who's never coached tight ends, taking a NFL tight ends coach and making him an offense coordinator quarterbacks coach. So I'm telling you, there's weird things that we've seen. And I think the the culmination of all of those things tells you that this was probably the right time. And I actually think the, the I give um, Chris McIntosh, the Wisconsin Athletic Administration and Department, a lot of credit getting ahead of this not waiting for it to careen out of control. So uh, I appreciate the comment. I disagree, though. I, I think they got ahead of this before it got uglier. Uh, let's see. So Dudley, um, quite a comment on the YouTube channel from Dudley Booger Dawson, and capitalized because he capitalized it, the Booger. Yeah, this is uh, Wisconsin. Not a big coaching job. Good luck. Not a big-time coaching job. I I just I don't get that mindset. Um and obviously, listen, I'm a Wisconsin fan. I got bias here. And it depends on what you define big time coaching job. Is like there, there's real, real big time coaching jobs like Alabama, if it ever opens up Ohio State, Notre Dame, uh, Georgia. You know, Wisconsin's not in that tier, but this is a top 20-ish job. And I top 20, top 25 job, no lower than that in all of college football. And I were I could argue it's a top 15-ish job in certain play in certain ways, right? So Wisconsin is what? the fourth, fifth best program in the Big Ten, really realistically. Um, and the Big Ten is one of two power conferences in college football. You see the money coming into the Big Ten, and you're telling me you're telling me the money coming into the Big Ten and a, a coaching job opens up at the University of Wisconsin-Madison who is also putting $300 million into facilities, and that's not a marquee job? Nonsense. This is a big-time job. It's a big-time job. It's not, it's not one of the top 10 jobs in college football, but it's one of the top 10 to 20 jobs in college football. So yeah, I, again, appreciate the comment Dawson. I, I disagree. Um, I want to throw this one up there because I, I see this concern from people and I'm going to snippet a portion of this guy's comment. Jimmy five, six, three, four says, say goodbye to the four star kid from Indiana. You were recruiting for your O line. He's off to Columbus. So let me say this, your, your recruiting department, your recruiting class, your current verbals, your current targets, People get this twisted. Those those considerations should never matter in your coaching search or your coaching decisions. People get too, I'm telling you right now, people get too wired up about, oh, we, we need to make a quick change or we need to do something quick to save this recruiting class. If you get the coach right, everything else will fall into place, okay? If you make a poor or rush decision on the, the coach to hire because you're trying to save one recruiting class, it's not going to matter in the long run. Your program's still going to stink because you made the wrong coaching decision. I would... So I and I and I'll, I'm not trying to pick on you, Jimmy, for the comment. I appreciate it, but I've seen other people say, "Oh man, what's gonna happen to our recruiting class?" Or you know, we we made a mistake here because we're trying to hold on to these players, and what's gonna happen to our targets? I'm I'm telling you right now, it, it almost doesn't matter for this year. 
if you get the right coach and you make the right decision here, it'll all work out. If you make decisions based on trying to keep this class together, like at the end of the day, this class doesn't make or break Wisconsin. Okay. This coaching decision does. So I'm really not worried about a four-star kid from Indiana who may end up going to Columbus. I'm sorry. I'm just not because the coaching decision is much more important. Let's see. I've seen this name a couple times. Um, Todd Monken, the UGA coordinator, offensive coordinator, as the next head coach, Alien Space, who's been one of the, the longest commenters on the show. And we're going to wrap it up here. I see Monken thrown around, around a lot from Georgia. I always get nervous with coordinators coming from major power schools who have more resources than Wisconsin. I just don't know how he would translate to Wisconsin. I think um, it's going to be Leonard. And if it's not Leonard, it's going to be Lance Leopold. I think that's it. And if neither of those work out for some reason, Leonard falls on his face and Lance either stays at Kansas or goes to Nebraska. Then I don't know. Then it's going to get interesting. Um, but I think those are the two clear front runners. And I think Todd Monken would be way down the list for a variety of reasons. I, I get the I get the idea, though. And uh, Alien Space, you're not the only one that's brought that up. We had Mike on the live show yesterday bring it up as well. So I think there's juice there. I just don't see it. Um, and a bunch more comments. But, we're, guys, we're just not going to be able to get to all of them. I really do appreciate it. Thank you for tuning in to Locked On Badgers, your show every single day. When you're done here, go check out Locked On Big Ten with host Nate Dickinson. He's going to bring you all around the Big Ten Conference. Bunch more coming up this week. I'm telling you, we are going to keep talking Paul Chris, football, basketball, game to get ready for. So much content coming up. Really appreciate everybody tuning in on Wisconsin, and we'll talk tomorrow.